All right, so welcome to another week. Uh, we're going to be getting further along uh, with our discussion today on destination management companies. As you might recall, uh, in our previous chapter, we were looking at the subject on destination marketing organizations, or otherwise known as CVBs. And so today we're going to get a little bit more into the role of what the DMC does. All right, so just a couple points to remind you about. Uh, the discussions have been uh, well kept up on so far for most of you. Just bear with me for a moment. Let me get this camera situated. There we go. And I'm just going to uh, let you know that I did just put in another discussion on there for this week. All right, that's gonna have something to do with food and beverage and how it applies to events. So I want you to think in this discussion about how we use food and beverage from a plated and sit down service side versus a buffet and self-serve side. All right, so explore those two different options a bit and talk about how they differ and talk a little bit about what kind of trends that you're noticing. Uh, BizBash is one of the uh, websites that I put there in the discussion that might help you with some trends. But take a look at that and add to that discussion, and uh, that will be for the attendance points for this week, and we'll, we'll kind of share those thoughts in our next class. Also, I did put an announcement up there for you guys, so you can see and remind yourself about the next set of questions that are uh, going to be due for the following week. And so just not to forget that. So in this chapter, we are looking at destination management companies. And really what that means is we're looking at the liaison between the host organizer or the, or the horse, host organization's uh, meeting planner and their suppliers, right? So, and the suppliers are uh, usually the hotels, uh, the convention centers, the restaurants, uh, any kind of uh, tour booking operating companies, right? So the destination management company would be kind of that middle intermediary position. Uh, they stand in the middle between those two parties. So services provided by the DMC is key to the event success, right? Because they really facilitate the process. And when you talk about things like transportation, right? Shuttle service, hotel, on-site assistance, uh, all these kind of things. Uh, you can really understand that point better. Right? So some of the things also that the DMC must have, just like we talked about similar with the DMO or the CBB, is that they have to have knowledge and expertise on the market that they're dealing with. Right? So um, they must have knowledge and also resources. Uh, they help out with things not just along the lines of uh, looking to see if it's the right city and it has the right capacity, but also can they do... Uh, certain things for VIPs? Can they organize team building events? Can they do excursions? Uh, what kind of tours can they provide, right? And think about the fact that mostly they're dealing with corporations and associations as their main target market, all right? Other terms that have been uh, referred to in the past for the DMC includes ground operators, all right? So uh, that was one. And then the other is actually known as PCOs. And PCOs kind of incorporates one of those other terms that we talked about in class, which was Congress, right? So you remember that? And that's usually a large international event. So of course, makes sense, right? So that would actually have to deal with international events um, if we're using the term PCO uh, more uh, beyond the borders of the United States. Also hired by the meeting planners are um, those that are looking to work with uh, the head of corporations or association planners, the DMC themselves also have the task of making sure they encourage networking, right? So if you think about why do uh, companies host events or why do associations host events, it's in order to bring people together for the purposes of uh, creating more business, right? And also in order to do so, what is optimal for that type of activity, right? So, uh, and in addition to that, hotels that wish to have more exposure are also 
in touch with these DMCs because they want to showcase what they have to offer. And on the other side of the spectrum, right, the meeting planner wants to go to a spot that offers the best environment, right? So that's really important to, to think about. Right, so if you look at your slides, all right, slides four, five, and six, they kind of go into some of these things. So DMZs work closely with airlines, not just hotels, also airlines, resorts, convention centers, transportation companies. They also refer to the entire activities and service for a client as a program. That's another thing to note. And also uh, they're a very important element in incentive travel. All right, so those are some really key points to talk about. And what they do, uh, there's a, quite a lot listed in the chapter, but anything from venue selection to dining programs, the VIP services that we mentioned, budgeting, resource management, et cetera. Another thing that really I always like to kind of point out in this chapter is that sometimes people get mixed up with, oh, it sounds just like a DMO, right? They might think, oh, they get mixed up with what the DMO and the CVB does versus the DMC. Here's something that really will hopefully solidify this in your mind so you won't mix them up together. The DMO or the Destination Marketing Organization or the, and, and the other term is that CVB, right? Convention Visitors Bureau. They optimize and expose a destination, but here's the thing. They're partially government funded. So we're talking about the DMO and the CVB from the last chapter. Those are partially government funded. They're also funded through tax dollars. We had this discussion in class, right? Those tax dollars are through hotel occupancy taxes that are paid by hotel guests, right? So it's important to, to really note that that's a big difference because with a DMC, right, a destination uh, marketing company, what they're really doing here, or destination management company, what they're doing here is they're actually working for profit. Right? So the destination management company is working for profit and the DMO slash CVB is working as a nonprofit, but gaining uh, funding through government and occupancy tax. All right. So the DMC is a local expertise just as well as the DMO, but the DMC works together to sign their own contracts. They earn their own commissions and they split commissions with hotel uh, third party meeting planning companies like myself, right, with third parties. So they book transportation, hotel, restaurants, etc. And the DMC also needs to have their own set of staff, right? And the staff works generally on a contract basis, right? So they have to make sure that they have enough uh, people hired to take care of on-site events. Clients are usually, again, associations or major corps. And... Another thing to really note about DMCs is that they have to have uh, their licenses and their insurances all up to speed because of the fact that they do deal with on-site operations. And uh, of course, it's a relations-driven industry, right? So those are some key points to note about uh, the differences between DMCs and DMOs. Other things, community contacts, customer contacts, history of success, uh, these are all part of the business structure of the DMC. All right, like I said, four uh, insurance is important. Must have strategic locations for offices, right? So uh, that's always good to be probably closer to a bigger city or at least have exposure on the web. Must be legally insured. We, we just mentioned for workers' comp and automobile. Must also compete in relation-driven industry and must keep up with contacts, all right? Also, there's different types of DMC organizations you see from the book. There's the independent, the multi-services, and the destination management network. All right, so the first one, the independent, uh, just one simple way to look at it. It's good when you only have a limited uh, amount of specific services that are needed. So you're not going so into depth. Uh, it's more minimalized. The multi-services operator is when you're looking to do bigger events, right? Typically larger with established networks of service offerings. And then finally, the big one, destination management networks. It's a pool of resources to achieve economies of scale. Other things here under the business model, right? Clients and customers, those who plan meetings, events, incentive travel programs, right? Going back to what we talked about, remember incentive programs are for those who uh, travel because they've won some type of award or contest in, as being top salesperson, or uh, they may have uh, won some type of uh, sales competition, and then they're sent on a trip 
as the reward. The client is a representation of the customer who purchases the DMC services. All right, so keep that in mind what the, the client's defined as. And on the other side of that, the planner is the person who represents the customer, company, organization who works directly with the DMC. So for my own personal experience, I'm the planner from what I do. I have a full list of DMCs that I can work with when I need to for specific locations. All right. So who can DMC clients be? They can be anything from uh, examples of corporate accounts, national sales meetings could be something that a corporate account would include, a training meeting, right? Uh, some type of uh, product launch, or it could also be some type of customer dealer meeting. Association accounts, all right, so these are gonna be bigger shows. Like we said with associations, are usually annuals. Um, you have your trade show, you have your professional uh, conferences, fraternal, educational, and your political conventions, right? So these would fall under the Smurf category. Incentive-based organizations, or anything uh, from sales to dealer incentives and service manager incentives. Other points that the book talks about, we kind of outline in the chapter and then the PowerPoints, is about business opportunities, right? So with the association and corporate, we already talked about. Also international incentive, previously mentioned. Sales and marketing plans, right? So in, industry trade show, uh, getting those to attend. Community sales efforts for networking, bringing people together. And also helping with marketing, right? Newsletters, brochures, all that kind of stuff, forming partnerships and memberships. And then also it goes into what the RFP should be, right? We have, talked about what a request for a proposal was for a hotel. A uh, DMC would also launch an RFP, not just for a hotel, but also for, like we said, all those other things. So if you're doing excursions, you're doing transportation, you're doing shows, entertainment, all kinds of stuff. All right, and then what would be in there? Project specs, research, development, creativity, innovation, and the budget, most importantly. So product specifications, if you break that down even further, what's the size of your group? What's the choice of the hotel? How much space do you need in your meeting space? Are you doing a gala dinner? Are you doing a smaller breakout session type of event? Uh, what are the demographics of the attendees? And again, working with that budget. And then finally, pricing. What's the total estimated cost? Uh, also, like we said in our previous lectures, right? Which time of the year and what's the local business activity look like, right? So DMCs can also give you a good picture as to what the city looks like when you're looking to book and maybe even what other groups are in town or in-house in some of these properties right so it does certainly help to work with the dmc but do keep in mind that they are in it for profit whereas a dmo is not so much so you say well why don't i even work with a dmc i just work with a dmo well a dmc has boots on the ground they have people there who can actually uh, really go out and pick up your uh, attendees. They can arrange for hotel shuttle pickup. They can uh, coordinate with the convention center. Uh, they can work with all types of on the ground uh, operational staff. Questions for staff under DMC operations, right? Revenue potential, amount of proposal of work, how many companies and competitors are bidding, success rates of the competitors, what are the odds of winning the contract, how profitable will it be, right? So these are some things you can ask. In the terms of the program development, you can also look at active selling programs. Uh, what are the uh, suppliers that are optional to work with? Is there a list of confirmed suppliers? Uh, project management that's assigned and also tour guides, staff supervision, all these kind of things that would be required for the program. And then executing the program, right? So then therefore, okay, we need pickup, transport, production we need a team for av we need film crews we need lighting we need all kinds of specialty uh chefs brought in you know we have a stage set up uh we need to do something for uh you know any type of special activity it would have to be obviously sought after and contacted just like we talked about in the chapter on um, vendors and contractors right so customer relationships, community liaison, on-site changes, et cetera. Production of events, then it gets into the timelines, right? So cocktail reception, breakfast, lunch, dinner, gala, uh, any kind of theme parties, team building events, any kind of networking sessions, and then finally the wrap up and building, uh, billing, right? So at the end, the final invoice, working with uh, the DMC, 
they would help you also to get try to get planners approval on billing on site and follow up on the evaluation of the DM services by the client. And then finally, debriefing. So uh, finding and selecting a DMC. So think about some things here. How long has the company been in the business? That's always really helpful, right? So if you can understand uh, if they have some good experience or not, uh, are they well partnered? Are they good at uh, working with their vendors? What are the personalities of the management team? Do you click well with them, right? So these are some things you want to think about. Some things also would be helpful if they have these qualifications. Are they part of PCMA, right? Professional Convention Management Association. Are they part of MPI, Meeting Professionals International? Uh, do they have any association with the American Society of Association Executives, especially if you're an association for that one and this one, the ADMEI, right? The Association of Destination Management Executive International, right? That's a long one. And some best practices with DMCs. All right, so they do take the leading green practice. That's always a really good thing. Uh, they also identify new business to drive into new new markets. They have also well-developed crisis networks, uh, management with relationship strategy, uh, high in ethical practice. And at the end of the day, uh, it's important to look at all those things in order to make the right decision uh, because it's really it's a business relationship and you need to have the right DMC that's the right fit for you as a planner. So that is chapter seven's highlights. I hope that uh, everyone's doing well and I will have chapter eight coming up for the following uh, lecture. And again, everybody stay safe. Please, please make sure you're working on those uh, end of course projects, your conference planning project, and get those next set of homework questions uh, for next week turned in and we will meet again in video form for our next class next Thursday. Everyone have a great weekend. Stay safe.